Well, afternoon all. It's uh, about half past two, Sunday. It's the last gasp decision to come out. Uh, got hold of my mate Carwin, who you've seen on a few previous videos quite a long time ago. So he's on his way. Um, but I thought I'd get here a little bit early because I want to try something out. Um, I've been on this farm various times. Uh, like if you remember, there's an old guy that used to detect you probably for about 30 years detected the heck out of the place and I don't find much so you know there are fields that I've concentrated on but there are probably about 10 fields that I haven't set foot in yet so we're gonna hit maybe one or two fields and stick to those uh, not veer off too much but I thought I'd set up early now because I want to try something new out my Equinox 800 now, as a baby brother, I've got the Xterra Pro. It's taken me a good few weeks to get hold of it. Um, through Dragon Detecting, Jordan Daniel, I'll put a link up uh, with a discount code and things like that. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving this Xterra a go. Because out of all the new mine labs, this is the one that sort of pricked my ears up. I thought, hang on, this sounds really, really in and especially for the price the new equinoxes are not interested if you own an equinox 800 i honestly don't see the point in upgrading unless you've got super duper historical land and you're constantly pulling hammers and romans out if you've just got bog standard land where you're just picking out georgian victorian that type of stuff i don't see the point in upgrading from an equinox 800 but as a backup machine my Equinox is out of warranty, so if something ever happened to it, I think the Xterra Pro will be a perfect machine to keep you going. But I'm going to give it a little swing now on a part of this field where I have been before, uh, just to get used to it. I'm going to use it in 10 kilohertz and leave it at that. And, uh, you know, you'll see me on the first hole if there is a first hole. See you shortly. There we go. Excuse the wind again. It's very deceiving, so I hope you can hear me. My first target, I'm only about 30 feet away from the car. And I got a nice 75, 79. So, lovely tone. So, let's see what the uh, next area's first target is going to be in a field that's been gridded by an old fella for about 30 years with different machines over the years with him and I know that he used mine labs he had CTX's he had uh, the original Xterra he had lots of mine labs let's have a look what we got then I'll bring you closer I haven't got too much high hopes but uh Okie dokie, where are we? I think I messed up a bit of footage, so I don't even know if you heard me swinging over it. Um, but I've just dug the hole. Uh, target is in here somewhere. It doesn't look like it's going to be very good. There we go, a bottle top. I thought it was uh, possibly going to be a silver coin, but there we go, first target, a bottle top for the Xterra, but it was a good signal, and it's about a good seven inches down. So anyway, that's the first one out of the way. Right, I've dug around the hole, I'll just leave you listening to it. It's a bit scratchy, numbers are all over the shop, but let's have a look together what it is. One thing I've noticed though, I have dug up coal, uh, which is disheartening. Shift you over a bit and see whether we can determine 
Well, it, it is. Let me pause you. Right, found where it was. It was in the side wall. I don't know what it is yet, though. What have we got here? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a part of a, a radiator valve key. Ah, well, good tone. Crap result. There's a cracking signal here. Yeah? Let's have a look what it is then, shall we? Numbers are jumping 65, 75. 64 74, 71 now. Let's have a look at Cracking little find. Oh. Nice little little child's shoe buckle by the looks of it. No decoration on it, but yeah, that's what it is. A child's shoe buckle or maybe a buckle that had gone on a uh, sort of 16, 1700 sort of tall hat that men used to wear. But yeah, there we go. Best find so far. Ah, oh, well, looks like I found my first sort of coin token thing with the uh, Xterra, but to me it looks like it's got a sort of clubs, sort of Ace of Clubs type of thing on it, but it also looks like it's got RA something. I don't know if it's RAF. I don't think it's anything to do with that. Um, yeah, strange little thing, can't really make much out on it, but it's definitely on that side, looks like um, th there are letters there, there is a shape there, but I don't know what it is. Well the next target was pretty iffy, um, <laughs> I've just been playing around with it and I've actually put it onto Park 2 now, even though I'm in a field. It's given me uh, quite an interesting uh, tone effect, um, which you can hear in a second. So that came up as a 47, and what I've got is some kind of, I, I don't know if it's a rivet or a collar type button. Um, like those removable collars men used to wear years ago. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure what this is, uh, but it was a good target. And I'm on 10 kilohertz, and I'm actually going to have a bash in uh, Park 2. So uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I got my buddy Carwin down by there on the target. He's using his new machine. We're both using basically new machines on the same day. We're both on a learning curve. He's bought the, um, what is it, the Macro Legend? Is it a legend? Yeah. yeah. Um, so he's on a learning curve, Dig, digging plenty of iron, uh, but he has found a bullet casing. Um, he's found a couple of bits and bobs, but yeah, lots of iron. Uh, he's not digging coal, I am. Uh, so whether that's something to do with the fact that he's on multi-frequency and I'm on single frequency. Um, but yeah, you know, we're both on a learning curve today fresh in brand new fields that we haven't touched before and two new machines so 
here we go again. Well, finally, we've been out for a good, I'd say, couple of hours. And uh, apart from that odd looking token type thing I found earlier on, uh, the exterior has just dug up a coin. There's a bit of the imprint there, and the coin is beautiful. And what we've got is we've got Edward the Seventh, and uh, the date I believe is going to be uh, it's a 1905. Let's see if I can focus in on that. Come on, focus in. Yeah, nine, 1905 is the date, but yeah, absolute beautiful. Dark, dark bronze colour. I like these. Been sitting there for an awful long time waiting for me to find it. And believe it or not, I've gone through the uh, Park 1, Park 2, Field 1, Field 2, Beach 1, Beach 2, before I even dug the hole. And it was coming up at a 61 to a 65 on all the settings, clear as a bell. So, um... That's absolutely stunning. Right, I've got an absolute cracking tone and out of curiosity I've left it on beach one. It's running on 8 kilohertz and this is a cracking tone. 70 to 73. Ugh. And I can see now that it's not a good target, but uh, it's an uh, absolute belting tone. Oh god, what have we got? There's so much tins in this place. But that's my first one of those, 